everyone. Good morning. It's Monday. And I know in our area, a lot of you don't have school today. So I hope you have fun. Don't know how much snow is left over from yesterday's snowstorm. But if you get a chance, go play in the snow. But definitely spend some time having some fun today on your day off. I know Daniel is excited for today and he's making plans. So I'm sure you've got some plans too. But first of all, let's get into the Word of God because God wants us to spend time with Him each and every day. I'm in Luke chapter 20, starting on verse 20. Here's what it says. Keeping a close watch on Him, they sent spies. Now this is the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're the leaders of the church and they're keeping a close eye on him. So they decided to send some spies to keep an eye on Jesus. They pretended to be honest. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the, the spies questioned him. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it not right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity or their trickery or their dishonesty. And he said to them, show me a denarius. That was their coin, it was the name of their coin whose portrait and inscription are on it? Caesar's, they replied. And he said to them, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he said in public. And they were astonished by his answer and they became silent. Don't you just love that about Jesus, that he always has the right answer? I wish I always had the right answer. Gosh, sometimes I get asked a question and I think, oh yeah, I know how to answer that. And then I answer and I go, why did I say that? That's, oh, that wasn't a good answer. Or you don't realize it was the wrong thing to say at a certain time for a certain situation. But Jesus always had the right answer words. So here were these chaps. They came to try and trick Jesus, but Jesus saw right through them and what they were trying to do. And so he answered them with honesty. They wanted him to say that they didn't have to pay taxes. They wanted to see what he would say about the government. They wanted to see. Now, this was in Israel, but the Romans were running the government and they were telling people what they had to pay. And so they were using the Roman currency. Just like we have American dollars and coins like quarters and nickels and dimes and pennies and the dollar bill and the five dollar bill. They had their own coins. And if you look at our coins, like the quarters and everything, and even the dollar, every single currency has a different picture of a different president on it. Well, on the denarius, which was their coin, it had a picture of their governor, Caesar. And so Jesus was like, well, show me what's, show me your coin. Now whose picture's on that? Well, Caesar, they said. And so Jesus said, okay, so give him what belongs to him. If he wants taxes paid, pay taxes to him. But give to God what belongs to God. He ended up answering two questions in one. You think about that? Does that make any sense? So they were really asking, should they pay the government? But also, if they pay the government, then they can't pay the church. They can't pay the temple tax. They can't do this and they can't do that. But Jesus said, Pay Caesar. It's his inscription. It's his face on the coin. It belongs to him. 
But what do you have that belongs to God? Ooh. He got him. He got him good, didn't he? He said, pay them both. Pay God and pay Caesar. Well, guess what? It's the same for us too. You know, when I go to the store, I have to pay taxes, whether I want to or not. So my bill comes up, and then there's a few extra coins or dollars on my bill. Whether I wanted it or not, I have to pay taxes. You know, those taxes go to the state, and they help pay for roads and schools and lots of other things. And so I'm willing to pay them. I don't argue over the taxes. And then whenever I get my paycheck, I have taxes taken out of my paycheck. And that money, some of it goes to the state and some of it goes to the federal government to pay for different things. And I don't argue over it because I know I have to pay taxes. But I also need to give to God. I have to give to God. So I make sure when I come to church, I tithe. Now, the tithe may not always be money. You may not have money to give, but God wants your time. He wants your service too. So here's what some things that you can do. You can pray. Mm -hmm. You can read your Bible. You can tell other people about God. You can be kind to people. You can do things for others without expecting anything in return. No thank you, no money, no hugs. Just do it out of kindness and love because God loves you too. So that's your activity for today. Give out of what God has given to you. It doesn't have to be money, but it can be. It can be. You can certainly make a tithe to the church, but give out of what you have. Your time and your talent, your service. God loves you so much, and he wants you to be able to share what he's given to you so other people can enjoy as well. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of the gifts and the blessings that you have given us, not just money, but our time and our talents. Thank you so much for each of those and help us to remember to give back to you what belongs. In your very precious name, amen. You guys have a super awesome day off of school today and take time. Take time to be with God. Love you all. See you next week. Bye.